Welcome, everybody. Happy New Year. Welcome back. This is me, myself, and I'm Joey G, Bad Bussy. Hopefully, you know me by now. If you don't, welcome. Welcome to the new year. Same show, same bitch, but we have a new guest coming to the show, somebody who I'm really excited about. I love their work. I've been kind of streaming their latest film obsessively and forcing all my friends to watch it. We have Eva Rain joining us. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I feel like we've been like kikiing for like an hour. Maybe not an hour. I'm terrible at math. Like half hour now. Yeah, like half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> and it's been lovely. Thank you for coming. Of course. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you for even like reaching out and wanting to be a part of this because I've been saying this a lot to my guests lately. I'm just like for real, for real, not even to be like corny and like blah, blah, blah and all that. But I'm like for real, like my show is yours. So anything you want to talk about, anything you want to touch on, cover, things we were talking about before we started recording, I would love Maybe to. Maybe not all of those salacious things. <laughs> Maybe take those out. I don't, yeah. you know, my, my mom doesn't need to hear that stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> That's a very good point. And mine doesn't either. I don't even think mine knows this show exists. And we're going to keep it. Oh, <laughs> That really? way. Yeah, I mean, I love her. But she's a very, I don't say stubborn. She's a very sturdy Egyptian woman. Okay. And... When she sees this, she'll probably like be happy I'm being productive and doing something with my life, but she just doesn't really get it. That's fair. If that makes sense. Yeah. It's kind of like even when I was at the breakfast club, like my parents knew what I was doing, but kind of had no idea at all. Maybe mm -hmm. it's like a generational right. difference as well, because like when they came here into the country and whatnot, like you became a engineer, a doctor, marketing person, business person, or whatever. So mm -hmm. they're probably just like, you could have worked in tv and radio and stuff like that but anyways yeah she don't know this thing exists oh my god she's gonna know one day <laughs> i like to save the surprises for the people like even when i have a guy that i'm talking to which a lot of them haven't worked out but i'll usually like before i announce it to my friends or family i'll like wait and then just surprise them and be like yeah he's coming tonight or just be like oh there he is he's coming to the club right now say hi they'll be like wait what oh <laughs> Yeah, I just like to keep people on edge a little bit. Right. I don't know if that's a toxic trait of mine or not, but I find it exciting. What's your sign? I'm a Taurus. Oh. Um, You're okay. a Leo, right? No, I'm a Leo moon, oh. but I'm a Gemini sun, Mercury, oh, you're Venus, Gemini. and Mars. You're a June Gemini, right? Mm hmm I see. And you said you're Gemini sun, Leo moon. And what was your sun again? Uh, Yeah, Leo. You're rising, sorry. Wait. No, no, I'm Aries rising, Leo sun. Ooh, okay. No, I'm getting so confused. Leo moon, Gemini uh -huh. sun. Got you. Yeah, and I have Gemini in like a bunch of other placements mm -hmm. too. And yeah. then Aries rising. Mm -hmm. That's like the same chart as my best friend, but like reversed. He's like a Aries sun, Leo moon, Gemini rising. Oh, wow. I think, okay. yeah. So like flipped and reversed. Did a mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. But yeah, I wanted to talk to you about a lot of things. I wanted to start first with Anything's Possible. Yeah. I watched it, I think, last week finally, because it's been on my like letterboxed list for the longest time. And I'm terrible with watching movies and shows. Like I just fucking started White Lotus last week. Oh, I love White Lotus. I just watched the first season and I'm like, I see why y'all like this show now. This the is The second funny. season is phenomenal. Really? You're like not ready for it. See, I'm gearing myself to start up for it. It's just after the first season, I have such an attachment to like that storyline where I'm like, how do I let this go? A little bit of it carries into the, the next season. Okay, like Jennifer Coolidge's character yeah. is still there. Mm -hmm. I see. She's like a major part of this next season. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That looks like a fun show. To be on, would you ever want to be on a White Lotus? -esque? I would kill to be on White Lotus type of show. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I need Mike White to call me like today. <laughs> no, literally, because like there is a plot to it, but there isn't really. And that's something that's really magical about where television is right now. Mm -hmm. You know, like I love seeing these sort of like non-linear storylines happening. Yep, because it's it's just like easy to get like lost in it and. You also like don't actually know what's gonna happen next. You yeah. know? Like, like 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 it's 
don't know, like it's not following this sort of like blueprint. Yeah, you know. Completely. So I, I love that about this like new age of film. Yeah, it's not like the traditional storytelling arc that like even I remember learning in school with like literature how it's like beginning, climax, peak, whatever. Like mm -hmm. everything lately has just kind of thrown that out the window, yeah. which is really nice. It even reminds me of like old movies like Napoleon Dynamite and stuff where it's like it, there's no plot really. It's just shit happening. Yeah. <laughs> and it's great, you know? Right. I need to start that second season. You do. You do. I really need to. But yeah, anything's possible. I watched it last week and then I rewatched it again last night. And I genuinely, and I'm not even saying that because you're here, but I really, really enjoyed it. Really? Yes. Wow. It was so <laughs> cute. Like, I love a good, like, wholesome rom-com kind of moment. Mm -hmm. And I think they're kind of like a lost art form. Nowadays, like, there's That's none, actually very really. true. You, you really don't see many of them, huh? You know, like, the latest one I remember is, like, that Bros movie that came out. Yeah. Or at least that was, like, advertised as, like, a rom-com, or that's what, like, Billy Eichner was trying to do. In which I did see that movie, and I will say, it was funny. Mm -hmm. Like, it was actually very funny. I was getting ready to not be entertained, but it was actually thoroughly entertaining, so. But, yeah, nobody does, like, rom-coms anymore, especially, like, coming of age, high school years, ones where anything's possible it takes place in a high school. Exactly. And it's their senior year too. Yeah. Yeah. It's their senior year. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No, um, you're fine. Uh, yeah. Anything's possible was so much fun to shoot. Um, you know, I've said this in like a bunch of other interviews, but I really do feel like that that movie is something that I needed to see growing up, and I'm so happy that I got to put that out there. I've gotten so many messages on Instagram from people who have talked about just how much this film meant to them, mm -hmm. and like literally from like around the world. Yeah. Um, which uh, I don't know. It's like I like knew it was gonna be shown internationally, but it's still different to like really see that and to have really? people like tag you with like the dubs of it and like. Russian and Portuguese yeah. and all these other languages and like even um yeah and like I like even have seen a few of the actresses who like uh voiced over me and mm -hmm. um yeah I don't know it's been a really wild ride yeah <laughs> yeah I bet how crazy that must be especially just like for you being a professional actress just like how long did it take to record that uh so we filmed it, um, we only had 25 days of okay. shooting time, so it was pretty fast. So in that 25 days, you're probably not really thinking about how the world is going to perceive it. Are you probably thinking of it just like day to day, I need to get my lines, I need to hit my mark, and such and such. So then when the time comes where it is distributed around the world and you're getting all that feedback, it's like probably so surreal just being like, oh, wow, y'all are watching the thing that I've worked on so hard for 25 days and done this amount of reads and table reads and whatever and yeah. work that goes into it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I actually was thinking about what everyone else was going to think mm -hmm. about it. And I think that's what was kind of stifling me at times. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't just living in the moment as much as I could have. So that's like my only regret. Because, um, yeah, like I got cast like the day after Pride. Yeah. And then... They literally wanted me to fly out then and there. Like, I had no time to process anything. I had mm -hmm. to just, like, hop on a plane and go. And then we had, like, about a month before we started shooting. So, like, I just got to know Billy. I got to know, like, my co-lead, Abu. Mm -hmm. um, and we just, like, rehearsed. And um, I tried my best to not be too in my head. But yeah. um, I was really in my head the entire time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um and yeah, yeah, it was, um, I mean, it was like everything that I wanted still because yeah. I, I had been trying to get into the industry for a minute and I didn't have an agent. I didn't have a manager um, when I first auditioned. And yeah, the process took like months. Um, and then next thing I know, I'm in Pittsburgh with Billy Porter. <laughs> so That's yeah. Crazy. How did you hear about the movie like where'd you discover the listing and just like how did that whole zero to 100 with anything's possible happen uh my friend morgan sullivan sent me an mm -hmm. email about it 
And then I just sent him a tape. Yeah. Oh, that's a good friend. No, yeah, yeah, he's everything, yeah. Yeah, and he actually helped me film the first tape too, so. Really? Yeah. That's a really good friend. And I remember reading, I think it was in like the Them interview, the Them magazine interview you had, you were talking about there was a moment on set where Billy was like, just breathe. There are a few like moments a, like that. Okay, uh, yeah. there are a few moments. So <laughs> yeah, there were a few moments like that where yeah. like I was just um it was like Billy would say, Eva, that was amazing. You were so good. Mm -hmm. Um and then I'm just lo looking at him like and he's like, Bitch, I need you to right. get into this. Mm -hmm. Um and to also just like cherish this for what it is. Yeah. Um yeah, like there were numerous people on set who said, you know, you're never going to have a, a moment like this again where this is your first movie. Yeah. Um, and you get to just like have fun and you're working with Billy and you're like the lead of this film that um, kind of is the first of its kind, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I definitely did take it in at, at times, but then there were other moments where I was like, was that good? Like, am yeah. I good? Am I just messing this up? Like, am I going to get fired tomorrow? <laughs> but yeah. yeah, that day never happened. So, yeah. Yeah, those feelings are always weird, especially when people are telling you like, no, it was great. It was perfect. Yet still inside, you're like, are you sure? Yeah. I feel like I could have done this. And they're like, no, you're fine. Especially with somebody of Billy's expertise being like, Eva, you're killing it. It's amazing. That had to be the most like surreal moment ever. Mm. Um to have Billy Porter look at you and go, you are so talented, you are so beautiful, you're a star. And I'm like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, really? Um, you know, it's like those, like, those are the things that everyone wants to hear, especially mm -hmm. when they're working toward this sort of goal. Yeah. Um, but then once you're actually in it, um, it can be a hard thing to receive, you know? I think it's hard to receive joy at times. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. How was the overall experience on set and working with him, too? Because he directed this movie, for those of you that don't know. Like, this is his thing. How was yeah. that overall experience? Like, what kind of practices does he take, like, on set? Just what's the overall environment that he curated for you all and the cast on set? He made a very safe environment for mm -hmm. all of us. Um, he wanted everyone to really learn, you know? Like, for mm -hmm. most of us, it really was our first, um, like, major gig. Yeah. Um, I mean, I really felt very out of sorts because everyone else had gone to, like, theater school or they had been in the industry for, like, for, like a while, and I hadn't done either of those mm -hmm. things. Um. But, you know, he really made it so that everyone knew how to really operate on set, how to, like, track the progress of your of your character's uh, evolution, mm -hmm. um, you know. And he, like, he wanted this to be a moment for all of us to really learn something so that the next time that we're on set, we don't have to ask any questions and we're just ready, yeah. you know. Um, and yeah, so I feel very, very blessed to have gone through all of that. Um, and also we had rehearsals, which isn't typical in film. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, usually you just kind of go, um, really? like maybe you have like a table read yeah, and maybe you rehearse like before you do, you, you, you like do the scene, but you don't rehearse like maybe like weeks ahead of time, you know, like that's, really? yeah, that's like, that's like super theater. But for film, that's not so common. Yeah. Wow. And you would think for a movie like Anything's Possible, like, you know, like, you know, it's set in a school and whatnot. And there are scenes where you and Carl are in the elevator and you come out and, you know, it's like it's choreographed. So I'm just like, how does all that come together? Oh, we choreographed all of that. Okay. Yeah. 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 But you don't like rehearse it like religiously. Not. No, no. Yeah. You. Wow. We. Maybe you block it like once or twice. Got you. Um, yeah, I mean, we got lucky because Billy did fly us out early. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that like elevator scene is something that we did rehearse like yeah. before we even did like costumes. Okay, yeah. We had rehearsed that. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I'm trying to think. Yeah, we rehearsed the elevator scene. Obviously, like the dance number at the end. It's which, so cute, by the way. It, it was cute. Yeah. It was also very unexpected. <laughs> like, I didn't so know cute. that we were doing it that day. Mm-hmm. Um, Like, we were told we're just blocking. So we're all like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll just block, like, walking from, like, the lockers to like, yeah. the classroom. Next thing you know, there's, like, all these backup dancers. Billy brought in all these people from Broadway. Like, Aww. like literally, like, there was someone who... um. I think she was in the original cast of Chicago on on, on Broadway. Mm-hmm. So she had like trained with like Fosse, what? you know, and there was someone else who had been um in The Wiz. Yeah. Like, you know, and they just had all these like amazing stories. Um and I hadn't danced since I was like 15. Mm-hmm. So I was very nervous. I was like, oh, a step ball, what? You know? <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, I like, kn- you know, I like knew all these terms. So I was like, I have not done this in so long. Mm-hmm. Um, since then, I've taken some dance classes and yeah. she's back in the swing of things. But Lovely. at the time, I was like, I'm about to break my ankle. Like, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> I mean, those stair sequences and whatnot, and there's all the cheerleaders on the stairs, whatever. That, that was actually the easy part. Okay, got That you. was that. Well, mm, no, it wasn't. The, the mm-hmm. like, timing of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's like all, like, like all three of us mess up the timing of that multiple times. Okay. Mostly me and Kelly. Courtney is perfection. Nailed it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She unplays M. She was so perfect. I was going to say, she looks like she's been a dancer before Artie is one currently. Courtney there is- does Broadway. Like, yeah, that's okay. like, I mean, honestly, everyone does Broadway pretty much. Not surprising. Yeah. yeah. Um, Because actually a lot of people went to Carnegie Mellon, mm-hmm. which is like right there in Pittsburgh, okay. and multiple of them were currently in, in um, school. I see. Yeah. So like, um, everyone who played, yeah, like uh, Alec who played Mike, mm-hmm. um, Simone and Grant, they had just graduated. Uh, um, Noah is currently at Carnegie. Um, the other girls go to school in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah, it was like a lot of college kids. Yeah, I see. Did. You and your co-star, Abu, have any, like, chemistry reads? Or how did you both kind of form your relationship prior to screening? Because in the film, the chemistry is there. Like, completely (laughs) there. Even in the first scene when y'all are in, like, the art class or whatever. Like, even just with the little instances of just the way, like, you wouldn't move physically, but your eyes would just look up at him. Like, I saw that chemistry. Maybe I'm looking into things too much. But, like, it was so cute. I'm happy that you noticed all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that, that makes me feel good as a uh, actress. Um, good. Yeah, Abu and I, um, we're friends. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we both, yeah, we both have the same birthday, so we always talk Aww, about that. Really? Yeah, like we had just had our birthday, maybe like a week or two before we got to set. Got you. Um, and no, we didn't have any reads before getting cast. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I had no clue who Call was going to be. I mean, I didn't know who anybody was going to be. Like, I was the last person cast. Wow. Um, yeah, like, they all, I think they all knew who was going to play who, but I was the last person. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, we had, like, time to just get to know e- each other better. Yeah. Um, Billy sat us down in his office and said, y'all need to connect. I want to feel the heat, you know? He yeah. was like, get this going. So... So yeah, um, yeah, but we had lots of talks, like talking about our acting journeys, talking about where we're from. Mm-hmm. You know, like Abu uh, was born in Egypt, yeah, uh, like in um, Cairo, I think, and he moved to the states when he was like eight. Um, you know, so he talked to me about what it's like to grow up Muslim in this country. I talked to him about what it's like to grow up black and trans in Missouri mm-hmm. and. All these things, so yeah. yeah. So then, by the time you're on screen, it's like you're just working with your friend that you know. Yeah, really yeah. Well. Like we had like work through all that awkwardness. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Was it challenging then, as friends, to perform those scenes where, like, it's post everything happens and you both aren't speaking and there's tension? Post what happening? Like like what, in like the, the film. like oh yeah, like yeah, yeah. oh like, like all the, those like fight scenes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that was um. Those were hard scenes mm-hmm. to film. Like, 
I I struggled to like let anger out. Yeah. So Billy had to really push me, you know, and he was like, you're not being nasty enough. Like, Ugh. I need you to give me all the things, you know? Um, yeah. So that was hard. Um, it also was hard, yeah, to be mean to someone who is my friend, you know? Exactly. Um, but he was like, do whatever you need. Like, punch me, slap me, whatever. And I was like, okay. <laughs> That's I mean, granted, he's taller than me, so I couldn't really reach. Uh, but In yeah, words, yeah, yeah. Um, there was something that they did cut though. I like flicked his head with like my long nail. Oh, that it. would have been so good. I know, I know. I mean, I hope I'm allowed to talk about that. But yeah, <laughs> it'll be in the director's cut. For, yeah, like, it's 10th anniversary edition. When mm-hmm. We're all looking back on yeah this as a classic because it is, but. Yeah, I would find that very challenging, too. Like, for me, I'm that type of person. Like, even when I'm with my friends and we're joking, we're, like, reading each other. Like, if we're joking, like, I'm going to joke real hard and I'm going to read you down. Yeah. Even <laughs> after that, I'm like, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Like, you hear that, like, I think I said something to my friend the other day. We were, like, pre-gaming. And the whole group was like, ooh. And even just hearing that, like, response, I was like, oh, was that too much? Like, and they're like, girl, no, you're fine. But it's just like, ugh, I don't want to be mean, but... No, I can only be mean about someone who I don't like. Same. I mean, I love talking shit. You know, that's like my favorite thing. I think that's such a nice way to bond. Like, yeah, all the friends I've gotten in high school, I mean, most of which I'm not friends with anymore. Here I am talking about them. But anyways, <laughs> I just realized, I'm like, wait, how we met is how? Anyways, but it's like that thing of like when you're in math class and there's that teacher's pen in the front doing the most. You look at the random girl sitting next to you and you're just like. Mm-hmm. And she has the same response. You're like, I like this girl. By the end of the semester, you're besties. Yeah. Like, talking shit could really bring people together. And it's not even like talking shit that you're making up or elaborating out of nowhere. It's just being descriptive, I like to call it. I feel like this is a very toxic topic. but Is it? But also, I feel like there's so much truth to it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, like, fighting with, like, parts of myself. I'm like, "Mm." I mean, yeah, no, like. Talking, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you thought about it for a second. <laughs> yeah, it's like because I'm like, wait a minute, that's like not media trained, Eva. We need to reel this back in. Um, no, I get it. <laughs> the authenticity. No, see, but that's my thing. Like, I will ask the question as I'm talking shit in parentheses, being descriptive. I will ask myself, I'm like, now am I being a hater, or am I just being descriptive? Most times, <laughs> I like to think I'm being descriptive descriptive yes but i just may be living up to the tourist definition or common you know tourists being stubborn thing maybe that's it but i mean tauruses y'all are mad shit talkers i find myself i'm being descriptive i don't think i don't think i'm talking shit personally okay that's because all y'all like earth signs Mm -hmm. y'all just don't think you, you like can ever be wrong Right? Right. There it is. But see, there's this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there it is right now. No, like... no, I'm agreeing to your point. Are completely. you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. It, I'm just reminded of this um, pillow my mom has like back home. And I don't know where the hell she got it or what prompted her to get it. And it literally says, I'm not bossy. I just have better ideas. And I'm like, work, mom. That's, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Exactly. That's like something that my mom um, would have. Yeah. Right. And it's funny because my mother's the complete opposite. Yeah. Like my mother's just like easygoing, could care less about things like that. But I don't know. Yeah. Talking shit is fun. It is. I guess when done right, like I never want to be a hater or hateful in general because like that's not cute. Yeah. I think that was me when I was younger. Mm. Like me in high school. I was hating, you know? Really? I mean, granted, like, I don't know. I mean, like, I got picked on a lot. Yeah, you know? completely. Uh-huh. You know, so I think, like, any kid who's being bullied naturally you're is going to get... It. Yeah, like, For you're sure. going to get a little vindictive. Yeah. And that's just natural. Um, And, yeah, like, since then, I've had to really, like, reel it in. But, okay, let's, like, kind of assess this. Like, mm-hmm. am I veering into like another territory um yeah yeah good point i i think i could relate on that like in high school for example there would be 
like some straight lacrosse player being annoying to me or whatever. And I'm just be like, he's just mad that I'm prettier than his girlfriend. <laughs> Which like, now that I look back on it, I'm like, Ooh. it isn't the most wrong thing I've said, but I'm like, maybe there is a sprinkle of hateration in there that I could just take out of that dish. I mean, the face is sitting, so I think Down. you're probably right, you know? Yeah, if we open up Facebook and take a look, yeah. Ooh. The testament still <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably still stands. Oh, God. Not me being a mean girl these days. What <laughs> happened? We're starting the year off bright. But um, when it comes to, since we're talking about high school and everything, how do you feel playing a high schooler? Was it like your chance to kind of relive a certain like high school life maybe you didn't have or something? Like, you know, when people ask a question of like, would you ever redo like your high school years or a certain period of your life again? Was it that for you? I would never go back to high school. Same, I'm ever. totally fine with where I am now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, high school was just not the tea. Like, I mean, it's like maybe like on paper, it looked like everything was going great because I was like editor of the yearbook. I was editor of the school magazine. You know, I was very yep. much that girl, but I didn't feel like that girl. You know, yep. and there were multiple systems at play that made it so that I never felt that way. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, when it comes to Kelsa, uh, playing her, it, yeah, it, you know, it felt like playing another version of myself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like Kelsa's growing up in like a different time. I mean, granted, I'm not that far from Kelsa's age. Yeah. I'm only 26. Right. Um, but, um, like really, I mean, even like 10, even like five years ago, like the world is a very different place now than it was then. Absolutely. Um, you know, so even for, cause yeah, it's like, okay, like kids in school now are like the younger end of like Gen Z, mm -hmm. whereas like we're like the older half, right? For sure. And for us... We very much had to deal with a lot of transphobia, a lot of homophobia, a lot of queerphobia, a lot of femphobia, a lot of mm -hmm. all of the things at higher rates, I think. Um, you know, because the way that I think some media narratives paint things now, like the world is so accepting of anyone mm -hmm. who's trans and queer and young, um, you know, aside from like, everything going on in Congress, right? But like on a like on like a cultural level, they you know, there's like this narrative that like everything is so peachy keen. Um and that it even was that like a like a decade ago. And that really wasn't the case. Um and it isn't now for most kids, I would argue. Um but um definitely thinking back to that time, um I mean, that was when It Gets Better was happening. Yeah. You know? Oh, my gosh. Right? Even hearing that, I'm like, <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, having, like, done the film, I had to really sit and think about, okay, like, what was high school like for me? Um, and what aspects of that can I put into Kelsa? What aspects mm -hmm. of it don't, don't like, apply to Kelsa? You know? Because, um, I mean... The story that I drew up for Kelsa and that me and Billy kind of like worked through, it was very similar to like my own story, mm -hmm. um, you know, and also even what was on the page that the audience saw, you know, like a single mom raising this kid in this sort of like Midwestern town. I mean, mm -hmm. Pittsburgh isn't quite the Midwest, but it kind of is. Right. The suburb. You know? vibe. Yeah, yeah. It's like right on that edge. Mm -hmm. Um you know, and also it's a single mom who works in like the medical field. Uh, Kelsey's mom was a doctor. My mom is a healthcare uh, like admin. Um, and, uh, you know, just those similar things. Um, definitely having parents who are pushing you to get the best grades possible and um, who may or may not totally understand what's happening for you when you do go to school mm -hmm. and also who may or may not understand you even at, at home. Um, and yeah, I mean, 
my life looked very different than Kelsa's. Um, I was very much, I was very much aware of who I was at that age, but the the world that I was in at that time wasn't ready for that, you know? And I was literally told by people, maybe you shouldn't tell people that you're trans, mm. you know? Like maybe you shouldn't come out with all of that quite yet. But even, even with, you know, like without me saying that, um, I was still called a T-slur, you know? Like I was called a T-slur as early, like as early as, as 12, right? Um, you know, and like, even growing up, there were like all these questions around my gender, like, oh, you're just too girly, you're too feminine, um, you know? And even when I came out, um, like you know, my first coming out was when I was 14, everyone kept asking me if I was gay and I was like, sure, I am. Mm -hmm. And then next thing I know, they're all like, no, I think you're a trans woman. And I was like, what? And this is like, you know, 2011. Yeah. Um, southern, southern Illinois, like 40 minutes from St. Louis, Missouri, mm -hmm. um, you know, like full on Trump country. Yeah. People are asking me if I'm a trans woman, um, you know, uh, and I always like, I always bring that, like, I always bring that up just to say that, uh, people are aware of transness and like always have been. Um, they want to act like it's this new thing that's all weird and strange. But if some kid from like a Mormon family and like Bumblefuck, mm -hmm. am I allowed to curse? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. If like some like kid from some from like this Mormon family and Bumblefuck nowhere is asking me if I'm if if like I'm a trans woman, I'm sure the rest of the world knows what a trans woman is, what a trans man is, yeah. what a non-binary person is. Like, people know these words. Absolutely. It's just um, when they're actually met with someone of that lived experience, yep. that's when they want to act all skittish and yeah. start causing a ruckus. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even the idea of adults or people other than yourself projecting what you identify as or what you could possibly identify as is just like weird behavior and unnecessary. No, it is. I be, mean, you know, and also I think like the way young kids get questioned on yeah. these things is really messed up. Uh -huh. It's like, why do you need to know? Right. You know, it's like, just let this kid be a kid. And exactly. when they have the language um, to talk about who they are, they will let you know if they even feel comfortable telling exactly. you that, you know, because it's really not any of your business. No, it really isn't. Yeah. Like I think about like Zaya Wade, even like Jojo Siwa, like she mm -hmm. came out, I think she identifies as gay or queer somewhere among mm -hmm. the spectrum and people continue to ask questions about it. And you're like, I'm just like, we're lucky that these people even wanted to tell us how they identify as publicly we could leave them alone now because they're also not doing anything scandalous or controversial, by the way. Like, it's yeah. not that deep. No, it's like you know? they're children, you know? Literally. They like, are children just wanting to live their truth. Yeah. Like, I don't know why that's such a hot button topic, um, you know? Yeah. Like, and also it's like queer and trans kids have quite literally always been a thing, you know? Yep. Like, this isn't new. This isn't some... Like uh, twenty first century trend, whatever. Or yeah, yeah, it's it's not. It's not like I mean, we can look at Mary Jones, who was a black uh, trans former slave, um, in like the like eighteen sixties, mm -hmm. um, and there's literally a like there's literally a court document that states that when she was a kid, um, she was just being herself and yeah. she was fully presenting as a girl at a very, very young age and yeah. no one cared, you know? Um, but I don't know, people, people just want something to be mad about. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I just yeah. never understand how people care that much about what the next person is doing if they're not causing harm on anyone. 
You yeah. know, that's always been my thing. Cause like in my own story of like coming out or whatever, like I was told I'm gay before I even identified as gay. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like I was like, I knew I loved all this stuff and I'd be watching Janet on TRL religiously or whatever, <laughs> but I never associated that with anything among sexuality. I oh, didn't even sure. know what sexuality was. All I knew is that all for you is on the TV and everybody needs to be quiet. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's all I knew at that moment. Yeah. And then, you know, it's just like that idea. I'm like, man, I almost wish I could have had like my own innocence back in a way and kind of just got to enjoy the behaviors of what could have been signs of me being queer or not. Yeah. You know, like one kid plays with Barbies. Maybe they'll phase out of it. And they, you know, I've seen so many of my straight friends too have like touched Barbies and played with them back in the day. And then mm -hmm. they have wives or anything growing up. And it's like, yeah, their behaviors are so not related to their sexuality or whatsoever. No, you and know? honestly, and like by, yeah, like by trying to stop a child by just playing with whatever toy yeah. feels best. You're actually making this a very taboo thing. Yes. And exactly. it will lead to someone acting out later in life because they feel that if they do anything that goes against the grain of what this person says, mm -hmm. that it's wrong. Yeah. You know, and that's how we have these high rates of violence and murder and all these things because people were taught that any interest in whatever thing or person is wrong yeah. you know that it's this like illicit thing that should be a secret always and that's not the case like yeah. just let people be people yeah. yeah and I also wanted to like kind of pertaining to the film and whatnot I just wanted to kind of get your opinion of where movies film music art is where that is right now in 2023 when it comes to representation of real queer people and not mainstream mass-produced queer mostly gay images i think you know? we're slowly getting there yeah but i mean the fact that pose is the groundbreaking thing that it is that's amazing that's beautiful yeah but it also is a testament to how much further we have to go because it shouldn't exactly. be a groundbreaking thing it should be as simple and as fun to watch as a show like White Lotus, you know, meaning that we need more things like Pose, we need exactly. more things like Anything's Possible, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so yeah, we have a very very long way to go on yeah. on like all of that, um, and I think I think Hollywood is slowly getting there. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of interest, yeah, in it. Um, but thing is, there's not enough trans and queer folks behind the scenes you know and like, I think yeah. that's where there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of like a discrepancy there mm -hmm. you know um because if there's not someone who looks like me behind the camera in the writer's room right. in the director's seat and I'm not saying that only trans and queer folks can tell trans and queer stories right but if there's no one Anywhere in that studio, anywhere in that lot, yeah. then how accurate is this story going to be, you know? Because yep. that also proves that, like, you know, people like us are not, um, that we're not even being normalized to the point of, oh, like, oh, like, this exec has, like, a friend that looks like us. And, yeah. oh, yeah, like, they went to... um like a wedding of so-and-so who's mm -hmm. trans or queer or whatever, you know, just like very casual, mundane moments. Yeah. I think that's how you actually get to understand people of different intersections, you know? Completely. Because if it's this larger than life moment that you met someone trans, yeah, she's like, oh my God, um, Eva, you know, I met this person yesterday and, um, I think they're trans. Like, oh my God. What? Right. Why are you so... Gagged by this. You know? Yeah. Like, you're so gagged. And now I'm supposed to, what, like, co-sign you exactly. on this thing? Exactly. Like, right. What does that make me? You know? Exactly. Yeah. 
And it's just, <laughs> that's such an awkward interaction because you're like, oh, all right, well, if you're not going to use your newfound awareness for any type of forward progression, especially with people of their privilege, what do I have to do with this? Why are you bringing this up to me? And I have you moments know? like that a lot. Like, yeah. you know, um, I mean, luckily living in New York now, I have lots of friends, yeah. like queer and trans. Mm -hmm. So like among them, it's like really not like a big deal. But um, maybe it's like a friend from back home or like a friend from college. Um, and, you know, they'll, you know, like they'll be like, yeah, you know, um, I, uh, I met someone and, you know, I didn't really realize it when I met them, but uh, she's a lesbian. Whoa. And I'm like. Work. Yeah, that's. That's they dope. Exist. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh-huh. Um, what's that interesting thing you were gonna tell me? Because I know that's not it. Right. <laughs> it's it's it, exactly. It's like when like straight ladies I used to work with will like talk about their other queer friends or whatever, and it's just like and try to potentially pair us up, and I'm like, they sound great, but I'm good. Yeah. Thank you. There's plenty of us that do exist. I'm Sad to hear that that's the first person among the queer spectrum you've actually acknowledged, but hopefully that behavior doesn't repeat itself. Work. Hopefully. Thanks, Sandra. You yeah. know, like, <laughs> shit like that's crazy. And especially with the film, like, I was thinking just about how refreshing it is, too, to see, one, just a character specifically, a trans character specifically, a trans woman of color, specifically a black trans woman, just be in love on screen. Yeah. It was so refreshing. It was so refreshing. And the overall story wasn't necessarily rooted in some type of queer trauma. I mean, there was still, you know, there was a backstory, of course. Yeah. And the characters, the character just being them, who they are, has to play into the story. But it wasn't like a sob fest mm -hmm. over. You know, like, yeah. I just realized that. And I was thinking, I was like, what other movies are there or you know, TV shows or whatever are rooted in the same thing. And there's not a lot, like even Pose. We love Pose. We love Pose. We love Pose. We love Pose. But I'm like, this is still a story. And, you know, it's retelling a true story that happened, you know, or a time or an era that happened. But it's still rooted in a very sad thing that happened to our community. Yeah. I mean, it's happening during the height of the, the AIDS HIV pandemic. AIDS. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's a very hard thing to tackle, right? Um, and granted, you know, we're still in the HIV AIDS exactly epidemic. Like it has not ended, and it's important um, to still tell those stories. It is, it is. But <laughs> but we just need more. You know, yeah. we just need more exactly um, because if that's the only thing, then that's the only thing that we will ever be associated with, and also people will think that we're not here now. Exactly. Right. So, exactly. So yeah, I think having multiple stories, it makes it so that we can track our history. We can yeah. learn another side of our history, which I think Pose showed Did an us. Amazing job. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, like something like Anything's Possible gets to walk through the door because Pose happened. Exactly. You know, like yeah. we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Pose. For sure. Um and yeah, honestly, anything's possible is not a script I thought would ever be presented to me. Mm. Like I thought, you know, if there is a happy trans narrative, it'll probably be like a white girl, not a black girl. So mm -hmm. to see that and to see that they wanted a black girl for this part, yeah, I was like, I don't care who gets it. I just hope it's it's made. Exactly. You know? Yeah. I mean, thank God it's me. Um, right. <laughs> okay. And like you were meant for the role. Let's be real. Period. Uh, uh -huh. you know, but um I'm just happy that this story exists yeah. and I hope I get to tell more stories like that. Right. Um and I hope that there's a lot more born out of anything's possible. Exactly. You know, I hope people get really inspired by that. Like, you know what? Let's bring this to Peacock. Let's bring this mm -hmm. to um Amazon again. Let's bring this to HBO again, you yeah. know. Um I mean, granted, Peacock does have a trans narrative. Um, uh, Josie Tota yes. on Saved by the Bell. Yeah, She's yeah. fabulous. Love her. Um, but more. 
You know, yeah, like there definitely. shouldn't just be one girl on each network. You know, it should be mo- like Multiple. tons of us. Yeah, yeah, completely. It's just showing the spectrum of queer lives and queer stories. Yeah. You know, and that was kind of going to my statement before. It's like, let's acknowledge the past and where we've come from and learn from it. Absolutely. Especially keep those, you know, mediums of media available for those who want to go back. And, you know, for younger kids, I need to learn about the past generation. But they will also learn by showing that there's much more to the queer lives we live than just our past yeah it's important but your story kelsa's story is just as important too absolutely and it gives those kids something to look forward to yeah yeah that's something that's been really touching um i've gotten messages from like young from like young trans kids Mm -hmm. being like hey um this helped me realize that i'm trans or like this is helping me um come out to like my family um or even like, I think like a parent of like a trans child mm. messaged me. Um, granted, anything's possible isn't totally the best thing for like low little, little kids. Yeah. Um, you know, it's definitely like a teen narrative. Yeah. Um, but you know, even like the little trans kids now, they're gonna grow up and they're gonna see that one day and be like, whoa. Exactly. Look, you know, it's and like, like me, yeah. Yeah, and like it won't be like a finally moment. It'll be like, oh, I didn't know this was here. But now I can yeah. watch this and I can, you know, yeah. Exactly. Because it's like you'll go on like the LGBTQ tab on Netflix and it'll be like Paris is Burning, Pose, and then maybe like Brokeback Mountain or whatever. And it's like. I mean, it's mostly white gay men. Exactly. You know? Let's just be very clear about exactly. that. Like, and when, like, yeah, like when you tap on that tab. You're not seeing me. No. You know, like, no. well, now, now. Now. Now you're seeing me. Absolutely. <laughs> now, but like, it's me and then, oh, uh, going, going. Yeah. And yeah. And whenever it's any stories pertaining to queer people of color, it's just their trauma. Yeah. And it's like, can't we keep that up there, but let's provide blissful moments of their lives too. Absolutely. What contributed to culture as well. Like, even like Pierce is burning. Like I watched that, and yeah, there's parts of it where you look back, especially those legends that aren't with us anymore. It's sad, but I still look back at that as like such a celebration of like, look what they've contributed mm-hmm. and built for us. None of this would exist without them. Drag race wouldn't exist. Like those little kind of nuances in our community. Yeah, I mean, honestly, drag race. You know, there's been so much critique over trans woman being a part of mm-hmm. that show, which now we see so, so much more For of us. Sure. Um, but even like seeing like Carmen Carrera um, so and unique, yeah. yeah, you know, yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Just like seeing all those girls um, coming up. Too, yeah. Yeah. Like that was, I mean, that was a big deal, you know, yeah. which people don't, really talk about much when it comes to trans reps. Um, like, uh, I mean, I know that when it comes to reality television, there's been a lot of negative portrayals. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Drag Race, without meaning to, it did kind of usher in a more positive narrative. At least yeah. it was gearing toward that you know yeah for sure and yeah. now it's on mtv like it yeah. has their friday night at eight slot like major major because i mean before you had to have logo or you had to be on yep. tumblr and find a link Ex- you know <laughs> one two three movies that was always All my that. thing <laughs> back in the day now 16 seasons later they're um on mtv or 15 seasons later excuse me it's crazy have yeah. you seen sort of on HBO Max. Um, yeah, I'm watching season two right now. Uh, or maybe I'm on I've season one right now. I'm not sure. It's it's good. It's, it's so really good. good. Yeah. There's that, and then this one's a sad one, but it's excellent. Have you seen It's a Sin? No, I haven't seen It's a Sin. Is that on HBO? Yes, it is. Ooh, wait, what, what's that about? So good. It's um with Ali Alexander. He's the uh, lead singer from Years and Years, and it's based in the UK. Okay. And essentially, the story is about these six college students coming together from all different places in the UK. They come to London. And it's the story of them going through the AIDS pandemic together. Like, as oh, wow. it's much more sad and it lingers among, you know, oh, the yeah. traumatic experience that was. But it's six episodes only. It was a limited series. But when okay. I tell you, it's brilliant. Have you seen Veneno? Yes. Oh, my God. Now, that's the One show. One of the best shows ever made. 
ridiculous. It's so good. So good. Oh my God. And it just stands out. It does. It's just so I good. mean, it's just and it's so just good. like, I mean, that's just good storytelling. That's what you know, I'm like we can throw the representation aside. Right. That's just good storytelling, period. Exactly. As a show. It's just an excellent yeah. show. Like yeah. they could have played it on FX or one of these other like huge channel providers and people would be tuning in weekly mm-hmm. for it. Like they Yeah, but watch it in Spanish. Do not watch it with, with, with like I can't dub. with the dub yeah. or anything. Mm-hmm. I need no. to Oh, it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. But I wanted to ask you too. I've been like having this conversation with my friends lately, this okay. personal note. What song at the moment soundtracks your life? And what song do you think soundtracks Kelsa's life? Whoa. Okay. Um, yeah, completely random question. But like I've just been kiki with the friends and chatting about it. So No, I mean, all I do is listen to music and I send my friends songs constantly. Same. Um, yeah, and, um, I, like, just joined Raya, um. Oh! <laughs> yeah, I, like, joined Raya, and, like, uh-huh. I was, like, adding songs to my, um, profile, so this is, like, fresh in my, my, uh, okay. mind. Um, oh my gosh, what song soundtracks my life? Like, currently, like, if currently. you write the opening monologue sequence to your, or no, opening montage sequence to your life right now what song would be underscoring it that's such a hard question i know joey come on i'm sorry doll make this easy <laughs> uh, um mm. or it could even be album or Okay, yeah. I mean, I thought of a song, but I'm like, that might be saying too much about what's happening in my personal life. Oh, okay. Um, an album. <laughs> I I like albums better. Okay. Yeah. That's an easier one. Honestly, um, it also is like one of my favorite albums ever. Uh, three 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 by Yes Tinashe. Tinashe. <laughs> Idol. I love her so much. Oh, uh, that's mother. Yeah, truly. Like that's mother. I mean, so. I mean, everyone in the Phantom says this. She is very underrated. Yeah. Um, Influential, too. Very. Everybody's been rocking that same white backdrop photo shoot with the arm okay. reaching out like the songs you cover. I mean, every honestly, though, that's something that I always notice with her. Mm-hmm. Like, whether it's music, a visual, whatever. She does it, then everyone repeats it. Absolutely. And then people online will be like, oh, sh- she's so tired. She's stuck in this air. I'm like, she's always rocking the freshest thing and like exactly she's like a major innovator yeah since she was like 15 she's she's been like leading all the kids yeah and so, people yeah. won't get it to like five years later even yeah. like yeah <laughs> super love i think i saw a tweet about that song the other day and they're like a lot of girls are trying this sound and not achieving it no yeah, that's a very good point and also, I think that was a song that she wasn't even that excited about. No, it was one of her like RCA releases back. Yeah, when she like she wasn't even feeling it, but she killed it. Still ate it. Like, and the like video uh, with like the like the booties going back moment. and forth. I was like, what? <laughs> it's so good. Stop you saying three, three, three made me so happy. No, I mean honestly, that album. I was shocked with how good it was. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like okay, I I knew it would be amazing. Yeah. But also, even when the album came out, it it dropped as you know, like like as we were shooting the uh, movie, um, and I was like, I mean, I was like so tired after having shot for like we had been going for like weeks, mm-hmm. um, and I was just super super tired. Um, turned it on when I was heading to set, um, and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, yeah, this is. This is really doing something for me. Exactly. Um, and yeah, I mean, like bouncing, and then like the bouncing part, part two. two. Ah! <laughs> it's so it's, good. Yeah. No, she really ate. She, she really, really ate. Did. Um, I can listen to the album all day, any day. Um, Same. and so yeah, that's definitely like my soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Um, Kelsa. Okay, what would Kelsa's album be? You know, I think I might go with. 
this is a, this is a little edgy for uh-huh. Kelsa, but I think Kelsa would like this song. Well, this album, um, probably Pop Two by Charlie X. Ooh, that's so good. That's such. A good I think choice. that's Kelsa's album. Yeah. Interesting. Do you have a song specifically from there that was soundtrack? Fembot. Uh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, with uh, Mickey Blanco. It was and on here. They were on the show. I love Mickey. I love Mickey so much. Yeah, I actually interviewed Mickey for paper. Um, That's right. You wrote the paper back in the day from when my research searched me. Oh, I just, I wrote that one piece for paper. Yeah. Like, that happened literally, I, I think I was finishing that in Pittsburgh, mm. you know? So, yeah, like, I mean... I, you know, like I um, was like waiting to hear back and I thought, you know what, if I don't get this, I guess I'll just keep going on with journalism. Yeah. And yeah, I had been asked to write a piece for paper, um, which was lit, you know, like who doesn't want to write for paper? Um, And yeah, yeah. And that had been a goal for a while. Um, But yeah, that interview was really, really fun. Mm -hmm. Um. I got to hear Mickey's album before it, it dropped. So yeah. yeah, I was I was loving my life. Yeah. I love Mickey and I love that album. Mm-hmm. I love Yeah, Broken that album. Hearts and what's it called? Which one? Like Mickey's album. Oh, um the latest one? Yes. The uh Pink Diamond Bezel, I think. The one before that. The one before that. Why am I blanking? I know exactly which one you're talking right? about. Right? Yeah. They came here, I think, a few months ago to talk about. Yeah, that's right. Because the one they came here was for the latest one. Okay. They're on tour with Florence. Yeah. Oh, wait. They were on tour at Florence. Mm-hmm. I'm so sad I missed that. Opening at MSG and everything. Uh, what was it? Broken Hearts and Beauty Sleep. Broken Hearts and Beauty Sleep. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Amy. Oh, I love them. But I wanted to ask you a few more questions. Okay. That kind of like have to do with the movie, but also kind of expand on to mm-hmm. bigger topics. So in the film, for those of y'all that haven't seen it, the um, the co-star two of the film or the love interest call, he's always on Reddit or like Quora or something, which oh, yeah. like I could relate to because I find myself on all of those. Like right. I'll ask myself like, like instead of flipping a coin because I'm that type of person, I'm like, do I want tea or coffee today? And I'll like flip the coin and then I'll be like, benefits of tea over coffee and benefits of coffee over tea. I do that. You know? And then yeah, you'll end up which on- I feel like a psychopath for doing that. I'm like, I like have to ask a Google Same. just to like walk up my front door. Like <laughs> Same. And then I'll end up on Quora and I'm reading about somebody talking about like their cat that passed. Oh yeah. Away. Oh my God. You will see the most wild things Crazy on there. Stuff. And then, you know, you start scrolling through the comments and it's like, oh, what happened to you? And you're like you're like learning like a whole saga of someone's life out of nowhere. It's so entertaining. Yeah. A24 <laughs> needs to like produce some type of thing they find on Red or Core because you can find everything. They definitely should. There. Yeah, because I think, you know, like Zola. Yeah, exactly. Came from Twitter. Yeah. But actually, um, Anything's Possible came from Reddit. Really? Yeah, it did. I did not know that. Yeah. You know, most most people don't. Um, Was this briefed somewhere? Because <laughs> I did not know that. Uh, you know, they, okay, so it was like 20, I don't know, when this happened, like 2018, 2017, mm-hmm. there was like this guy who got on Reddit mm-hmm. and he asked Reddit like, oh, there's this girl yeah. in my class who I have this crush on. Like call story, yeah. No, it's it's literally, it's literally like call story, like that was all from Reddit. Uh-huh. So yeah, there, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was, um... I know, like, there wasn't really, like, much follow-up on, like, what exactly happened mm-hmm. with all of them. Um, so it wasn't, you know, what happened and anything's possible with Kelsa, like, mm-hmm. going viral on YouTube and all this stuff. Because um, the Reddit thread, you only hear the guy's perspective. Yeah. Um, but then um, the writer of Anything's Possible, um, Jimena, um, she basically saw this thread and was like, huh, I think I could do something with this. And yeah, then she wrote the script. Billy found it because he's like, oh, wait, this is in Pittsburgh and that's Billy's hometown. Mm -hmm. And Billy was trying to find his first movie to direct. Yeah. And so it was just kind of like a cycle of things. Yeah. 
Um, out divinely. Yeah, but when I yeah, but when I saw the casting draft, I was like, oh my god, this is that this is like that thread. Yeah, and I was like. I want this movie. Like, give me this movie. Because, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, I'm like a major internet kid. Like, you know, I was on Tumblr and yep. YouTube and all that stuff. I didn't post anything because I was I, I was always too scared to. Yeah. But I wanted to be one of those YouTube girls, like, so badly. Mm-hmm. And the next thing I know, I'm playing it on screen. So Exactly. Yeah. And one of those questions that came up in one of the many Reddit scenes was how do you get over someone you've never dated? It was like one Ooh. of the random questions. And I was like, that one really sticks out to me because that'd be happening to me a lot. Oh, that happens to me every day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am a major hopeless ro- romantic. Same. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, how would you get over somebody? Or, or I mean, you're, you might still be learning that because I am. Um how do I get over someone I've never dated? Yeah. Um, that's not what I'm currently going through. Good. So I don't know what it's like over there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not really going on with me, but the people that are talking to me now, like the question. Oh, like first. they're like obsessed with you or. Oh, uh, that's right. Because this thing is busy over here, right? Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, so you, so you're so you're just the heartbreaker, I guess. I don't know. I was talking to the enemy over here. Whoa, I don't find it the enemy. <laughs> I, maybe I'm just flourishing in my personal life, and my energy is quite abundant. And there's so much of it to share, but not a lot of it to share exclusively and romantically. Mm. That was such a pageant answer. Ew. Well, it sounds <laughs> very monogamous. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm aiming for. Right. Not at the moment, but when something does land, I do want it to be monogamous. Same. You know? Same. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, how do you get over something you've never dated? Yeah. I what's mean, worked for you in the past? Wait, what? Or like, what's worked for you in the past? Like when you've fallen for somebody you've never. Um, dated? so uh, we're getting personal. Um, okay. So, like, this like past year, uh-huh. I was abstinent. Same. Yeah, I was totally abstinent um, for like nine plus months. Um, and yeah, and honestly, that was really healing um, mm-hmm. because I needed to just, just like sit with myself and like really sit with myself, yep. which I feel like you know, the girls are always like, you know, I'm just like doing me right now. I'm just like on my own journey. But Meanwhile, really not doing it. You're not actually doing it. Yeah. You know, like you need to delete Tender. You need to delete Hinge. Okay. Delete her, Grinder, Lex, um, Raya, Recharge, whatever it is. Baby. Delete yeah. everything and like meditate, pray. Mm hmm. Get baptized in the ocean, you know, do what you like, yeah. do, do what you need to do. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was a hard process, just um really like doing the personal work and like, you know, like being in therapy and really being very serious about like my journaling practice. Cause um, yeah, I mean, I wasn't necessarily getting over someone I hadn't dated before. Um, I was more sort of like getting over like a series of failed relationships Mm -hmm. Um, or just not even like fail, just like maybe we both wanted different things, Yeah, you know? Um, And that can be a hard thing to grapple with. But with people who I've never dated before, um, I wasn't going about it in the healthiest of ways. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, I'm, like, totally obsessed with this person, and I'm imagining our wedding, and, Yep, and I don't even know his middle name yet. That's me as fuck. Yeah, Uh you know, it's like, all I know is your first name and your, uh, your total, your, like, full, like, birth chart, because that's what I always do. Yeah. I do everyone's birth chart readings constantly, um, and it's very toxic to do that with dating oh. like you really should wait at least a couple months before you do that mm-hmm. um but yeah i was i was you know i was living my life my best 
Brooklyn life. Yeah. Um, and just getting heartbroken over and over again. Um, and and like that's yeah, and like that's like what it was. It's like okay, it didn't like work out with this person. Let me find someone else. Yeah. Let me find someone else. Let me find someone else. And it's like just constantly getting obsessed with new people yep. or even when someone comes your way you're like mm, but you're not really what i was thinking when i asked the the universe yeah. for for a person so i don't want you i want that person yeah um Aww. so yeah it was just a constant cycle that just kept going yeah. and going and i finally slowed that down yeah. um so now I don't know what my advice would be. I mean, honestly, my advice would be uh, really think about what is it that you like about this person and why, mm -hmm. you know, like, do you actually like them or do you just like the idea of what you formed of them, you know? And that's oftentimes what it was for me. Like, I wasn't actually meeting people at face value. I um, was like, oh, well, you know, yeah, that guy was kind of a douchebag. But he didn't mean it. He loves me. Yeah. Deep down. And it's like, no, girl, he don't give a fuck about you. Exactly. Like, stand up. Literally. Stand up. <laughs> that video, that woman, however she identifies as, like, they have no idea how much they've shifted things. I literally. I say it to myself every day. Baby, I would play that video every morning. Yes. For the entire, like, month yes. of April and, like, May of this past year, I think. Mm -hmm. I was playing that and I was like, yeah, I, I will stand up the fuck. Like yeah, that is an affirmation. <laughs> it like, is. Even when I catch myself doing some dumb shit, like about to reply to a story and I'm like, stand up, Joey. Stand up, girl. Yeah. I'm you currently know? attempting to take a break from Instagram. Okay, we'll lovely. see how long that lasts, but I'm doing yeah. my best. Um, Cause yeah, you know, you see that one person that maybe y'all have this back and forth with. Uh -huh. And, you know, they post a picture like after yeah. they were at the gym or whatever it is, Ugh. you know. And they always post that at like the so right but so wrong time. Yeah, you, you know? know. Or like maybe you just see them walking around somewhere or you see them about to get on like a flight. I don't know. It's like you, yep. you get uh, you get totally obsessed. Yep. But also, I think certain people they thrive off that energy. One hundred. You know, like they they like want you to watch them. Exactly you know? because they probably have somebody else that they're trying to pursue, and they don't feel confident enough to pursue that person because that person is being put on a pedestal. So they need the audience's praise, aka their other hoes and shit to give them that false confidence and they could go on and pursue that person that they actually want to go get. Or at least that's yeah. what I've witnessed from my research. Yeah, and honestly, I think that's the problem when it comes to dating in like major cities mm -hmm. because there's so many of us. Yeah. And there's there's always going to be a prettier bitch. There's yep. always going to be a richer bitch. There's, there's always going to be a skinnier bitch yep. or whatever it is. What 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 whatever thing that you don't feel totally to care about there's someone else who like has that thing quote unquote absolutely who honestly might be jealous of you you know and exactly. that's what kind of blows my mind because sometimes there's people who i look at i'm like oh god they're just they're perfect you uh -huh. know i'll never be as perfect as they are mm -hmm. and you know we like talk like oh my god girl you are fabulous like i wish i had this and this i'm like you want what i have oh my god what? Yeah. You know, um, and it can be, yeah, like it's something that's very difficult to uh, go through, especially when you're dealing with like these like toxic people that you're dating. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm queer. I date people of all genders. Yeah. Um, but, you know, among that toxic masculinity permeates the surface. Yep. Um, and those patterns of someone being toxic and someone trying to make you jealous, it doesn't matter what gender like anyone is. Right. You know, I mean, it's fuckboy behavior no matter Regardless. the uh, gender. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. Like, there may be, like, the hotter bitch, the richer bitch, all of that. That's why I realized, but I'm just like, 
just have to find the bitch for you. <laughs> you know, you there's gotta be, you, you gotta find your bitch. And, and your, your bitch, bitch has to find you. <laughs> you know, like there's gonna be your bitch out there. Wait, I love that. You know? Wait, I'm, I'm about to make that a fucking t shirt. Go ahead. You have to find your bitch. Yeah. And then on the back, it could say, like, your bitch will find you. Your bitch will find you. Because they will. I love that. You know? That was cute. That's lit. <laughs> we'll be in touch. But, um, my last last question I wanted to ask you. When I was doing your research for today's conversation and whatnot, I believe it was them magazine or people, you've just been booked and blessed. So it was quite hard to keep count of. But towards the end of the discussion, you were talking about your voice and you were talking about the nuance that unfortunately is of like passing with your voice and whatnot. I just want you to expand on that point because I found the point that you made so beautiful and such a good point. And then after that, I just want you to explain where's Eva's voice this year. Whoa. Whoa. Dramatic ending, shall we? I mean, for real. It's like we're having a little kiki. Next uh-huh. thing I know, therapy. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Um, yeah. Barbara Walters moment. <laughs> Now, there is that. I feel a little blindsided uh-huh. by that question. If you're comfortable no, answering it, that's what matters. No, I love deep talks. I love a good, deep-ass talk. Love. So let's just take it there. You uh, seem to be like TMI kind of girls. I love somebody that always has to say TMI before they explain something. I'm like, yes, tell me everything. Oh, I'm the same way. yeah. No, I... um. I mean, I'm very much like like an open book. I mean, I like I can be so shy in a lot mm-hmm. of social settings, but once you like start talking to me, I really don't give a fuck. Yep. Um, but yeah, okay. So when it comes to passing and the voice and like all these things, yeah. Um, yeah, like as a trans woman, I've had so many moments of people being like, "Oh my god, your voice." Excuse me, like your voice is amazing. Your voice is so calming. It's so this, it's so that. And like, um, you know, like literally I was in Chinatown the the um, other day and these two men heard like my my own voice, like, wow, your voice is perfect for like voice acting. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, are you like a voice actress? I was like, I'm a I'm like, I'm a screen actress. Like, what really? And then we started talking about all these things. Um, and that's happened a few times. Like I worked at a Whole Foods a couple years ago. There was this guy who was like a theater director who was like, are, you know, are, are you an actor? Your voice is perfect for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, yes, it is. I'll have my resume ready for you tomorrow. <laughs> um, yep. but, uh, yeah, um, I, I can have those moments that are so y- euphoric and amazing and hopefully it can make me some money. Um, but then there's other moments where maybe a guy sees me on the street and he's like, hey, Ma, what's up? And um, I speak and either he says, oh, your voice is so sexy. Or he's like, wait a minute, where are you from? You know, because he just hears like a tonal difference maybe mm-hmm. like what than like what he's used to. Right. And moments like that can really send me spiraling um, because I, you know, it's like I'm like minding my business. I'm walking down the street. um, I'm just getting from point A to to like point B. Someone is walking toward me expressing interest and whatever. And, you know, these days I really won't stop for you. Um, Like you, I mean, you got to be fine as hell. Yeah. Like, you better look like you mm-hmm. came right off the cover of, like, freaking GQ. or Yeah, or you know, yeah. like, you need to be a, a model. You need to be so fine. You need to look like you have something going for you. Mm-hmm. If you're just, like, an average Joe, Dude, yeah. don't, don't, don't talk to me. I'm not risking that moment today. Um, Especially if I'm having a good day. I'm like, I don't want you to make me feel dysphoric over this thing right now. Um, you know, like I don't want to call my girlfriend crying yeah. in the next five minutes. Right. Um, 
so yeah, that can be really difficult. And it's something I still think about. Um, and when it came to the film, once I got cast, I was like, oh my God, like I need to like, you know, kind of massage this a little bit mm. into like a higher octave. Um, which I think any trans girl can do. And I think a lot of us do it without even meaning to like, um, you know, like your voice, just as you go through your journey of womanhood, it will shift as you just come into yourself, um, and all this stuff. Um, and Billy, before he, you know, even heard me speak to that or before we even read lines before the table read, before any of that, he was like, I hope you realize that your voice is amazing and your voice is why I cast you. And I was like, uh, and he uh, said, I don't want you to change it. I don't yeah. want you to feel like you should change it. Keep it exactly as it is. And he said, I want you to use your full range, the highs, lows, the peaks and valleys, all of it. Um, and I just burst into tears <laughs> because I was like, oh my God. Um, yeah. I didn't think anybody was gonna say that was gonna say that to me. I I didn't think anybody looked like him. You yeah. know, like this person who is a living legend, yep. a career veteran. Um, I like you know, I didn't think anybody like that would see the value in my voice because I didn't see the value in it. Mm -hmm. Um, Grant, I had just done a piece with like Vice News, yeah that I was hosting and like I did voiceover for, um, but I was very self-conscious about that. Mm -hmm. And it was very hard for me to even hear myself in that. Um, and that's been, that's been like a big learning curve. Cause even when I would do self tapes, I wouldn't want to watch it back. Cause I was like, I can't stand hearing it. Yeah. And like, or maybe if I didn't feel that my voice was exactly where it should be, mm -hmm. that I shouldn't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah um, completely. But honestly, like since, yeah, since working with Billy and since going through that process, I have found so much more pride in it. And I don't really give a shit anymore. Because um, also those moments where I do get clocks off my voice are few and far, but, you know, like, like that's not like, that's not like, like, like an everyday thing. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, yeah, it, it it really really isn't. I mean, if yeah, like if like anything, people just realize that I'm not from from New York w when I speak. Um, especially if a little bit of twang gets in mm -hmm. there, um, because sometimes I can sound real country. <laughs> uh, Billy had me do some lines over at times because he was like, "Eva, we're in Pittsburgh. We are not down yeah. in uh, Jackson." Yeah. Miss no, he said like. Mississippi. Oh, like, like South South. He's yeah. like a deep, deep, okay. deep, deep down. Um, which I do have moments like that, you okay. know, even when I do tapes, there's moments where it slips out and I'm mm -hmm. like, that's not where I'm supposed to be right now. Um, but um, yeah, yeah. I hope that answered your question. That was perfect. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And I and I like especially having you like comfortable with that question like I really wanted to ask that because I saw that piece and even for me like I was just like this is so powerful and I know there's people out there that struggle with those issues like passing is such a vague vast and nuanced oh my god thing yeah. within our community and I've I never I hear the discussion about it sometimes when it comes to the voice but it's mostly about the appearance that, so for you to that speak is what it, it mostly goes to. Yeah. You know? And I mean, you know, um, that's also why I was talking about it because, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, there's so many different ways to describe it, whether you're passable, you're cis assumed yeah. or whatever it is. I do benefit from a lot of that. Like, you know, I really don't get clocked much. Um, that's just my truth. I'm not trying to brag about it or like whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, um, and you know, there's even people who say it is it, like, like it is a privilege versus it isn't. I think, I think there's levels to all of this because also, um, I think it was, um, I think it was 
Raquel Willis, who said, like, as a Black trans woman, um, passing is not always allotted to me because just Black, yeah, just like being a Black woman, period, you can be totally invisible in certain spaces, you know? So, like, your womanhood isn't even thought about because you're just a Black person who's kind of in the background of other folks' lives. Right. And that, you know, and like, and like that varies from space to space to Mm -hmm. circumstance to circumstance. Um, and yeah, like when it comes to those conversations, um, I think it's just really vital to have nuance and, and like all of it. Um, cause yeah, maybe off of my, maybe off of my appearance, I'm not getting clocked. Uh, but then when it comes to like the 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 voice, that's a whole other layer to it. I'm gonna say I was talking to a older trans woman mm-hmm. once and she was talking about how when she when she when she would walk down the street in like two thousand four, guys would like holler at her and be like, Oh my god, you're so beautiful. I want you to like mm-hmm. be like my wife and then she would speak and they'd be like, Oh my god, like yeah. I know I was being fooled. You're you're a man. All these things, and I've had moments like that too. You know where um, you know everything's going great, and then maybe it's just like that little thing that he sees, mm-hmm. and everything goes out the the uh, window, and it can go from a moment of oh um, I want to take you to dinner to. I guess you could suck me off. Yeah. You know, and like, that's what guys have said on dating apps or um, over texting or like whatever. I definitely would get that back in Missouri a lot. Um, And yeah, I mean, I, I'm very like, I don't really, uh, I don't really accept advances from men as much as I used to. You know, I think a lot of young trans girls, um, it's almost like you're being validated yeah. by men. Um, and that's why I'm glad you took control of that. Exactly. From them. And you said, this is how my voice and our voices are powerful. Exactly. Actually, you know? Yeah. And it you took me. It perfectly. Yeah. It, yeah. It just took me a while to get to that point where I was like, I actually don't need you to validate me mm-hmm. because who are you? You know, I'm, I'm even motherfucking rain. And look what you like, I don't voice need you. brought you. Exactly. No, and like that's something that always gets me whenever I think back on those moments of someone telling me that my womanhood doesn't fit the bill for them. I'm like, okay, what are you doing? Where am I right now? I'm living my dreams. Exactly. You know, and you're still thinking about me. You're still sending me DMs on on like Insta. You know, and I've moved on from all that. So, exactly. yeah, well, that's a perfect place. And thank you. Yeah, thank you thank so you. much. <laughs> like, that was perfect. No notes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming. Thanks for all that you're contributing to our community for real. Like, this show is for you and for actors and other queer creatives just like you and beyond. So. Thanks for everything. Oh. You'll be here again. I'll be streaming and supporting from afar. Everyone, I'll put all your details in the bios and whatnot so everybody can stream anything as possible the way I've been obsessively streaming it for the past two weeks now. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And thank we'll you hang so out much. Too, soon, too. Absolutely. Please. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see y'all next week. Thank you for tuning in. Please watch anything as possible if you have taste. See y'all next week. <laughs> if you have taste. <laughs>